Uh, hello guys, I am Sidian Rabbit here with another video. I haven't been able to upload a video in the last two weeks. I've been a bit sick, but thank you for having patience and staying with me. Now today I'd like to do a video on the prospects on, of the Republican Party for the future. Diversity or plutocracy? There is a civil war on the Republican Party and it will affect its prospects for the future. So. I follow Mike Enoch and the other TRS guys on Twitter because they provide a more realistic interpretation of the current state of the West, particularly in regards to capitalism. Enoch posted a very interesting thread recently where he argues that the GOP is complicit in the demographic death of old America and their strategy is to become a minority-friendly party like the Democrats and by that maintain the two-party structure. The idea certainly has a lot of strong evidence behind it. In light of recent events, Trump reaching out to the homosexuals by launching a global initiative to legalize sodomy, Trump and the GOP at large are now feverishly preaching to the Hispanics for votes, and conservatism's mainstream stars are increasingly pushing this mutated cost form of conservatism, where you do not need to have any conservative values to be a conservative. All you need is to swear fealty to capitalism and Israel. My guess is that either the GOP gave up the fight on demographics long ago, or they planned this all along. I am more partial towards the latter, considering that Sheldon Adelson is their biggest donor. The GOP strategy is essentially pause capitalism. They are real against racism, sexism, homophobia, transphobia and all the other ists and phobias like the left all the while advocating for more tax cuts for billionaires and deregulation in the banking sector. But here's the catch. It won't work this time. First of all, let's go to the cultural boss stuff. The GOP has increasingly gone left in the field of culture, now proudly embracing the rainbow flag. Conservative icon David French declaring drag queen story hour as a beacon of liberty. Now, the GOP is probably betting that by going left on this sexual degeneracy, they'll win the millennial vote and the minority vote. I fear they're about to be sorely disappointed in that regards. You see, progressives, that is, hardcore degenerates, are only 8% of the population and disproportionately white, probably 20-30% Jewish. They're a tiny, vicious minority and do not represent the majority opinion. The whole post stuff is only progressing not because of popular demand, but because of the elite pressure who artificially create the impression that these cultural Marxist values are popular, and they do this via their control of the media. These 8% of the population who tend to be disproportionately college-educated are the only people who put LGBT issues and other white liberal issues at the top of their concerns when voting. Plus, no matter how far left the GOP goes on these issues, they'll never get the progressive vote. The GOP is portrayed as the party of white people and has long been their adversary. There's no reason for the progressive crowd to vote GOP as the Democrats give them all they want anyway. They don't trust them, and the GOP is never going to outleft the left on degeneracy. If the GOP can run a gay man for president, the Democrats can run a transsexual, a necrophile, or whatever. If anything, the GOP stands to lose votes in their leftward push on culture, as a lion's share of their voter base tends to be composed of ultra-religious Christians, many of whom feel betrayed and disgusted and might stop voting for the GOP if they go further left on culture. Now, as for winning minority voters, well, these people don't vote for the left because of their policies on LGBT or because they love statism. They vote simply for the Gibbs. The Democrats, being the left-wing party, offers them more economic handouts and buys their votes in this way. That's how the Democrats turned blacks into a solid voting bloc in the first place. First the New Deal of FDR and then the Great Society programs of LBJ. The same goes for the Hispanics. Thus, despite decades of the GOP pandering to black and Hispanic voters, their vote share has stayed stagnant. For the last 40 years, the racial voting pattern has remained consistent among all groups. Hispanics vote 24 to 30% Republican, Blacks 9 to 11%, Asians about 30%, and 
wide swing around 53 to 63% for the Republicans. It hasn't changed in decades, and there is no reason to think it will change now for the reasons I laid out. Minorities are pragmatic voters. They don't care about fighting wars for Israel or abortion rights or LGBT welfare. They care about the Gibbs, and the Democrats have moved quite to the left on that regard in the last few decades. For those being hopeful about Hispanics voting 30% Republican, I'll remind you that 53% of Hispanics are white, that is Castizo, genetically 73% European on average. Do 53% of 50% and you will get the mythical right-wing Hispanic vote. So the only way the Republican Party is going to stay relevant in the future is if they move to the left, not on culture, but on economics. They have to start branding themselves as the party of welfare, UBI, loan forgiveness, and so on. That's the only way they can hope to remain relevant in the new age of economic U.S. politics, by going left and buying the minorities with economic handouts. The old days of idealistic politics and kvetching about abortion and supporting the troops are over. Evangelicals, rural whites aren't going to deliver the GOP elections anymore. To win, they must win the minority vote to a strong degree, and the new Rainbow Coalition couldn't care less about Israel, abortion, the military, or policing the world. But here is where the internal strain will show up in the GOP. The GOP donor base is full of bureaucrats like the Koch brothers. They fund the GOP for more tax cuts, more license to pollute the environment, more deregulation and defense spending. Will they allow the party to go leftwards on economics? If Trump's any indicator, they won't allow it. They'll try to steer the country more to the right on economics. Increasingly, as Paul Ryan's budget plan, A Path to Prosperity, showed, which wanted to abolish Medicare and Social Security. So, take that for what it's worth. Plus, the Republican leadership is now, and for the next decade or two, will be boomers and older Gen X guys who are capitalist ideologues and shameless agents of Wall Street. I cannot envision a GOP going left on economics. What applies for culture applies for economics as well. The Republicans will never be able to outlift the left on economics as well. The Democrats will always be able to offer more to the hordes, be it for Aurelian taxation or money printing. My guess is that the party will in the next decade or so fade into irrelevance. It continues to sell this version of pause capitalism to the new coalition and fails, while the Democrats due to demographics become the single party dictatorship. My guess is that sometime in the mid-2020s there is a white nationalist party and various separatist parties that hold power locally and increasingly contest local elections on the state, country and municipality level. The Republicans become another libertarian party with 5 to 10 senators, 50 or so congressmen and a few governorships, while alt-right and separatist parties hold significant seats in governors, Congress and the Senate while the Democrats continue their domination on the presidential and federal level. This is my prediction for the future and the Republican Party. Let me know your thoughts in the comments below. And as always, please, if you like this content, share and subscribe. Thank you for watching. I'll see you next time.